xin gửi lời chào thân thương nhất đến với quý khán thính giả của uh, chương trình Up Close and Personal với Christine Sa và đây là đài truyền hình VHN TV. Uh, kính thưa quý vị, Christine xin kính mời quý vị hãy theo dõi cuộc phỏng vấn rất là Up Close and Personal của Christine với nhà thiết kế Bảo Trenty. Bao Tran Chi is a costume and fashion designer. Tran Chi graduated from Otis College of Art and Design at the top of her class and immediately upon graduation was offered a designer job at Anne Klein in New York or work on Queen of the Damned, the motion picture, as the illustrator and assistant to Academy Award nominated costume designer Ariane Phillips. Bao took the costume job and became the youngest person ever admitted into the Costume Designers Guild. From there, she went on to work on other films such as Charlie's Angels, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, The Madonna Drown Tour, music video styling for Janet Jackson and Destiny's Child. She debuted her self-named clothing label in 2004 with a stunning standing ovation that was said to be the best show of Los Angeles Fashion Week. Since then, among her many accomplishments, she has been chosen to be one of only 13 life-size cutouts at the first Vietnamese American Historical Exhibition for her work in fashion and costume at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Hello, I'm Bao Tranchi and I'm really, really happy to be here today. And uh, I'm a fashion and costume designer. I don't know if I'm a fashion and costume I'm 100% Vietnamese, I'm very proud of it. Uh, you can put that on my grandfather. It's my father's father and um, actually in the 40s, my grandfather was one of the wealthiest men in Saigon and he imported in like Vespas and Mercedes into Saigon and he did a lot of business with Europeans and, and our name was actually Tran Chi and so he just kind of uh, put it all together just to make it more of a brand name mm -hmm. and uh, it coincidentally turned it into a Italian name so I, <laughs> yeah so I love it because nobody ever knows what to expect when they see my name because yeah. it's like I have a boy's name Bao and then Tranchi which is Italian and so uh -huh. which is kind of like me I'm this whole big mystery that I, just, <laughs> I have to constantly figure out actually grew up in the San Fernando Valley. I mean, I was, I was a boat child. We, we left Vietnam and uh, we were sponsored by Methodist Church in Culver City and we lived there for about two years, three years, and then we moved over to San Fernando Valley. And my father did that on purpose because he said, you know, because everyone has always asked him, they're like, you know, why didn't you move her to Little Saigon or, you know, more in the community and stuff. And I'm so thankful to this day that my father made this decision way back then, he said, you know, I want her to grow up having her own identity outside of a community establishing who she is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, you know, growing up and just deciding who you are, not because you grow up amongst everyone who's the same as you. Right. How long, professionally or how long? Well, honestly, I always knew I was gonna do this. It's just one of those birthright things. Mm -hmm and I couldn't even help it if I wanted to do something else. It's just something that like I will sit and it just manifests out of me. Like I can literally design a collection any, you know, over that vase or that shelf or anything. Like it just, you know, um, it's just, it, it, I always knew it. My mom, when we came over to America, she worked in the sweatshops actually to support our family. And I would actually go with her because, you know, I was the youngest child of nine kids and so, I, I would sit next to her in the sewing machines and actually, you know, just watch her and stuff. And then my dad actually was did, was a draftsman when I was growing up, and he would bring home his, his drafting and everything and be drawing. So I think just growing up and watching my parents and just, I honestly think you're born a certain way. I honestly really do. And it was just something, and I think just seeing them and just seeing that hard work and just seeing them just do whatever it takes to survive 
and knowing that this is what I'm supposed to do. So from from beginning, you know, I've always been making clothes, obviously, you know, the whole Barbie thing and the whole, <laughs> you know, and as soon as I was in high school and I knew when my high school credits were going to count for college, I knew I was going to go to art school. So I stopped at Algebra 2, you know, because, <laughs> well, I'm like, you know, I, you know, pattern making does not require calculus. So. <laughs> So I did whatever I knew I had to take to get into art school as soon as I hit 10th grade, because I think that's when you're... So I was new. Um, you know, I still do. Um, well, there was two. Um, one, I'm actually a really good writer. I mean, is that awful saying that? Um, I love English literature. Like, I love, 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 love the written word. Like, to me, it's so romantic, so powerful, something that can just last generations. Just how you group together 26 letters into something, a sentence, a paragraph, that can move someone to tears. Like, it's amazing. Like, I think it's, it's just as powerful. It's so powerful a medium. And, um, you know, I love reading. I'm a huge reader and I love writing. And that was the only other thing, I think, just like wanting to get into English lit. Mm -hmm. And, or the other thing was forensics. <laughs> <laughs> I know, nobody would ever assume, but that's like the other thing that I love. Like, but it, it was always kind of like, I, I think I always loved the psychology behind it of why somebody would, you know, do certain things. But, it's the same with fashion. I love the psychology behind fashion more than I do because I love clothes. I love how it makes someone feels and how it completely changes somebody's, you know, opinion of you, your opinion of yourself. Like, to me, like, that's what's thrilling, like, the, the powerful impact of something. God, you know, I hate this part. <laughs> you know, you would think that, like, I would just totally love to just rattle off names and stuff, but honestly, for me, um, I mean, honestly, I love that my work speaks for my, for itself and that if you just research just a little bit or you just know what I do, then you know the people that I've dressed and people who've worn my clothes and the people who love my clothes. And um, I just like having my, my work speak for itself. And as soon as I do it, then I feel like, okay, this is accomplishment I've accomplished and I can put this on the shelf and moving on. Mm -hmm. I'm all about moving on to the next bigger mountain, next bigger ceiling, you know? It's like, I never cap off, so it's kind of like, I don't rest on my laurels of, oh, well, I've done this person, and that I think that that should be impressive to the, ne to the next person, you know? For me, it's just about what am I producing now? What am I doing now? What am I doing next? Like, as soon as I dress somebody, it's like, I've done it. And so, I'm proud of myself for that, but it's like, so, I mean, I know, I hate being so evasive like that. Is that awful? <laughs> Christine Sai xin phép đại diện cho cô Bảo và trả lời câu hỏi này. Đây là những ngôi sao mà đã mặc những trang phục của nhà thiết kế Bảo Trang Chi. Tyra Banks, Brittany Murphy, Courtney Cox, Daryl Hannah, Jamie Presley, Jessica Alba, Kelly Clarkson, Kristen Stewart, Naomi Watts, Paris Hilton, Rachel Lee Cook, Grill groups Danity Kane and the Veronicas, as well as Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, to name a few stars who have worn the Bao Tran Chi label. As I studied her designs, I felt inclined to describe them as unpredictable, which seemed appropriate to describe the designer herself. So my question for Bao was, do you mean to be unpredictable? Uh, I totally do not intend to be unpredictable. I just, I just can't help but be me. And I'm moved by so many things, you know, I'm moved by emotions, I'm moved by passions, I'm moved by, and just whatever, I, I can't be false, you know. And sometimes I've seen people be able to do it, like live a life where it's like totally perfect to fit into the mold of society or whatever. And. I'm so not the gray area person, I'm so not the middle ground, like I'm highs and lows and all passion and like love and like just, you know, I, I love what I love and I love what I do and, and I think just those impulses helps me create better and that if I was predictable, you probably wouldn't be interviewing me right now. 
Kính thưa quý vị, Christine để ý trong khi tiếp chuyện với cô nhà thiết kế này là hình như cô ấy có những quan niệm rất khác biệt với những quan niệm bình thường của một cô gái Việt Nam. Uh, Christine cảm thấy cô ta có một lối đi riêng. Um, I had noticed that Bao seemingly has a very strong path of her own, one that's quite different from what is traditionally expected of a Vietnamese girl. So I asked her if she had ever wanted to play that very role. No, because there's tons of other girls who will do play that role, and they'll play it really, really well. And I couldn't do it even if I tried. I've always known since I was a little girl that I was just different. And uh, I learned at a really, really early age that, you know, you just have to love who you intrinsically are, or else what are you going to do, grow up the rest of your life hating yourself? Like, what a waste of a wonderful gift we're all given, you know? And, um, you know, of course, you know, I... I s- I mean, it's not just being a, a traditional Vietnamese girl, it's just being a traditional girl. I don't even think I'm a traditional girl. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm very headstrong, very, you know, opinion, and very, like, I, I, I move with my own waters, and... Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be anyone else but, you know, just exactly like how I am. I think it's just more truthful and more honest. Mấy cảm tưởng của bác khi thấy con mình làm việc cực khổ vậy đó Bác lúc nào, bác, bác với bác gái lúc nào cũng vậy Thương con lắm, mà không nói ra được Chỉ cứ khuyên cái là ráng giữ sức khỏe, ráng giữ sức khỏe, vậy thôi